grade 8 math, number 11.3a. We're going to talk about angle-angle similarity and discovering angle-angle similarity. We can tell that two triangles are similar if two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of the other triangle. We can see this blue triangle smaller than the green one, but they both have a 60-degree angle down here and an 80-degree angle at the top. Similar figures have the same shape but may have different sizes. So two triangles are similar if their corresponding angles, these two correspond to each other and these two correspond to each other because they're top, if their corresponding angles are congruent and their corresponding sides are proportional. So even these sides are proportional to each other, okay? If we wrote them as fractions, they would be equal fractions, the length, okay? So if this was two inches, that would be four inches, and if this was three inches, that would be six inches. It would be double, okay? Like that. So we can see that they both have a 60 degree angle and they both have an 80 degree angle, so they're similar. So you might want to get a protractor for this and some paper if you want to follow along, or you can just watch. We can draw a triangle with a protractor and a ruler that has a 45 degree angle and a 60 degree angle. We start by drawing a straight line segment for the base of the triangle. Now mine is six inches long. All right, on the left side of this line segment down here, we're going to line the protractor up with the end of the line segment. All right, so see the circle right here in the center? We're going to put that on the end of the line segment, and we're going to look for the 45 degree angle. Okay, so we're going to line it up like this, and see this part of the protractor is going to be right under the line with the end of the segment right in the center of the circle and then we're going to put a mark right at the 45 degree mark. Can you see where it's in between 40 and 50 degrees right here? Can you see that? I put a little green mark and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect that mark to the end of the line segment and draw a line with the straight edge of my protractor like that. I'm going to make it a little bit longer than it needs to be so I know whatever this one's going to be will actually cross it. Okay? So now we've made a 45 degree angle by doing that. We measured it from the end, we put the little mark, and then we connected it with a line like that, okay? So now, what we're going to do, because we have our one 45 degree angle, and we need to make a 60 degree angle, don't we? On the right side of the line segment, we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to line up that circle on the end of the line segment, and we're going to put this part right underneath the line, and I'm going to put a mark where the 60 degrees is. See that? 60 degrees is right there. I put an orange mark right above the 60 degrees. So now all I have to do is connect the mark to the end of the right side of that line segment. All I have to do is go like this and draw the line. Now I've got a 45 degree angle and a 60 degree angle for a triangle. Now what you need to do is draw a second triangle with the 45 degree angle and a 60 degree angle, but make the baseline segment larger than the one on the first triangle. So this one was six and I made this one nine. All right, and I did the same thing. I lined this up and I put a mark where 45 degrees was. I lined this up on this side and put a mark, see right here, where the 60 degrees were, and I connected the lines. Now I've got similar triangles. We can use the triangle sum theorem to find the measure of the third angle. So remember that from the last few videos? It's the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3 is going to equal 180, 180 degrees, because all the interior angles of a triangle equal 180 degrees. Well if this is 45 and this is 60, we know that we can substitute 45 degrees for the measure of angle 2 and 60 degrees for the measure of angle 3 and we get the measure of angle 1 plus 45 degrees plus 60 degrees equals 180 degrees. Now we can combine like terms. The 45 and the 60, well 40 and 60 makes 100 and the extra 5 makes 105. Now algebraically we can see what we need to do. For an inverse operation we just subtract 105 from each side and that'll isolate this measure of angle 1 on this side and 180 degrees minus 105 degrees is 75 degrees. So we know the missing angle measure for angle 1 is 75 degrees. See that? 
Now, if the measure of angle 1 is 75 degrees, it's 75 degrees for both triangles, the small one and the larger one. So two congruent angles prove they're similar because of the triangle sum theorem. It has to be 75 degrees here and 75 degrees there. So we know they're similar because they have similar angle measures. And two angles were enough information to prove it, wasn't it? Because of the triangle sum theorem. All right? Okay, so that's discovering angle-angle similarity. We're going to talk about using the angle-angle similarity uh, postulate in the next video, okay? So remember what a postulate is. It's a true statement that doesn't need to be proved, and theorems and axioms come from postulates, all right? So we'll talk about that more in the next video, 11.3b. I hope to see you there. I hope this was helpful. I hope you're doing okay. Bye.